At Roxy's, we get a lot of questions about accordions. One that comes up often is about the chromatic button style of the instrument. Many people who already play the piano accordion are curious and wonder, is it difficult for a piano accordionist to learn to play the chromatic button accordion? Well, it just so happens that I first learned to play accordion using a piano version of the instrument. And then later, I converted to the chromatic button version. Because I had this personal experience, I've been asked to address this issue in a video. Before getting started, I need to say that it is not my purpose here to list all the differences between the chromatic and piano accordion. In this video, I simply want to address two questions. How did I accomplish the conversion from piano to chromatic button accordion? And was it difficult or easy? Of course, I'll mention a few characteristics of the chromatic that I happen to like, but I will not be complete and I will not discuss whether the chromatic as an instrument is better than the piano accordion. Nor will I try to convince you to play the chromatic yourself. That's really something for you to research and decide on your own. To get you started, I do provide a link to an online article in the text description section of this video. An article that contains a complete comparison of the two instruments, piano accordion and chromatic button accordion. And finally, I will not be playing any actual music in this video. There's really no need for me to prove that it can be done. There are plenty of fine performances on YouTube played on the chromatic by musicians who are much more skilled than I am. To begin with, a chromatic button accordion is not the same as a diatonic button accordion. Most diatonics are single action or bisonoric, which means that each button plays two different notes depending on whether you push or pull on the bellows. In contrast, a chromatic button accordion is double action or unisonoric, which means that it plays the very same note independent of the direction of the bellows. Well, in this respect, the chromatic is exactly the same as a piano accordion. Also, the chromatic button accordion, by its very name, can play all chromatic notes, that is, all sharps and flats. Again, exactly like a piano accordion. So you see, a chromatic button accordion is more similar to a piano accordion than it is to a diatonic. Of course, the physical location of the notes on a chromatic is different than they are on a piano accordion. That's obvious by the appearance of the keyboard. However, this is what gives the chromatic certain playing advantages, which I will get to soon. Actually, although all chromatic button keyboards look similar, there are several different systems, each having notes in different locations. The one that I play is called the French system or Seagriff. The word griff is German for handle or grasp. Since these systems differ by the location of notes, they affect how you handle or play them hence the word griff. Other popular systems are the Russian bayan or B griff system and the Finnish system, which is popular in Finland. I won't mention any others for the reason that they're very rare. Incidentally, a Roland chromatic button accordion can be easily configured to play six different chromatic accordion systems. So with a Roland, I can play any system I like, French, Russian or Finnish. I chose the French Seagriff system for the reason that it is the most popular in Europe. My FR1X came configured as a Seagriff instrument by default. Before I bought my chromatic button accordion, I was warned by many piano accordionists that converting from piano to chromatic would be difficult. However, my experience taught me different. Exactly how did I do it? Well, I did not use a teacher. I did it myself using standard books. My favorite chromatic accordion book is this one. I call it the Mogain book. Mogain is the author's last name. I've written the exact title and author's name in the text description section of this video. It's written in French. Now, I'm not fluent in French. Yet, this book remains my favorite over many others that are written in English. 
Who else can better teach the French Seagriff system than someone who lives in France? But it turns out the language is not a problem. You see, all musical instrument instruction books consist mostly of graphic diagrams and practice sheet music, none of which require translation. And for whatever text the Mogain book contains, I was easily able to use Google Translate to find out what it said. Besides, since I already knew how to play piano accordion, I didn't really need instruction on the basic general use of the instrument. But, and this is important, Mogain is not the only book that I use. I also used the famous Palmer Hughes accordion course. Now hold on, you say. Wasn't the Palmer Hughes accordion course written for piano accordion? Won't that mean that the instruction will be all wrong for the chromatic? Wait a minute. The main difference between a lesson book written for the chromatic and one written for the piano accordion is the suggested fingering for the practice pieces. My goodness, that doesn't make the book all wrong. Besides, the differences in fingering are not as great as what most people think. For example, it turns out that for the C griff chromatic system, the system that I play, the fingering of well over half of the practice pieces in Book 1 of Palmer Hughes is exactly the same as what is written in the lessons for piano accordion. No difference. That's right. The very same fingers are used on the very same notes in each case. Yes, of course the keys representing those notes are in different physical locations, but I found that very easy to adjust to. In fact, I actually find the key locations on the chromatic to be more natural, more conducive to the shape of my hand. Now, of course, if you progress beyond that point in the Palmer Hughes lessons, yes, different fingering is required as the pieces get more complex. But, and this is important, it was a very simple matter for me to apply the general fingering strategies that I learned in the Mogain book to all of the practice pieces in Palmer Hughes up to my current playing level. I even made a special YouTube channel dedicated to proving this. The channel is called Roxy Palmer Hughes, and in it you will see me play many of the Palmer Hughes practice pieces using both styles of accordion, piano and chromatic. I give you a link in the text description section of this video to that channel. You know, music is music, no matter what instrument you play it on. Did you really think that the practice pieces in the Palmer Hughes accordion course couldn't be played on the chromatic? In the end, I found the transition from piano to chromatic accordion to be quite easy, and I'm not an exceptionally gifted person or an advanced musician. In fact, since learning the chromatic, I honestly wonder what all the fuss is about. My best advice for anyone wanting to make the same transition that I did, no matter what your level as a piano accordionist, is to start with the most basic beginner level practice pieces. From the Mogain book, learn the note locations from the diagrams and practice the exercises so that your fingers properly learn to navigate the new note locations. Music teachers call this motor memory or muscle memory, and it must be learned by repetitive practice for every different musical instrument that you wish to play. No exceptions. As you progress through the Mogain book, you'll realize that different ranges of notes require different fingering strategies. Learn them and practice them. With that knowledge and skill, you'll be able to pick up any Palmer Hughes practice piece and based on its tonal range, easily determine the best fingering strategy for it on the chromatic. Besides, on any instrument, fingerings in lessons are only a basic guide. Any good music teacher will tell you that suggested fingering is just a starting point. As a student, it's your job to determine your own best strategy for fingering each piece. We're all different. One person may favor one strategy over another for a variety of reasons, like different hand size, dexterity, etc. Your teacher, if you have one, can help you with that. 
The sooner you learn to determine your own fingering strategy, the better musician you'll become. Personally, I found many of the pieces in Palmer Hughes noticeably easier to play on the chromatic compared to the piano style accordion. In short, if you wish to convert from piano accordion to chromatic button accordion, use the same common sense strategy that everyone uses when learning any new musical instrument. Start with the basics. Use the Mogain book to learn fingering strategy. Use the Palmer Hughes books to expand your practice repertoire. Work with both books progressively, starting at the very beginning and don't skip any part of it. Indeed, I found it helpful to work with the Palmer Hughes supplementary material in their prep books and recital books. The more practice repertoire I learned, the better I mastered each level as I progressed through the lessons. Use that strategy and you'll succeed. In contrast, if you jump ahead and start playing advanced pieces that you can already play on the piano accordion before you've properly mastered the required chromatic fingering techniques on more basic practice pieces, I predict that you will fail. Some people have asked me to post lessons on YouTube to teach people how to play chromatic. But after what I've already said, do you not see why that is unnecessary? Everything that you need to know is already in the books that I've suggested. So, now that I've successfully converted from piano to chromatic button accordion, you're probably wondering which style I prefer. In the end, although I do continue to play piano accordion every once in a while, I prefer to play the chromatic. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll never say that the piano accordion is inferior. Many people play it with skill far greater than I can ever hope to achieve. But there are a number of characteristics of the chromatic that I happen to like. For example, the octaves are closer together on the chromatic. Hence, I can stretch my fingers over a greater range of notes. I can more easily play notes separated by an octave. I could even play notes separated by two octaves. No one can do that on a piano accordion. And since the octaves are closer together, my instrument has greater tonal range than an equal sized piano accordion. This FR1X has exactly the same tonal range as the piano version of the FR3X. Yet look how much smaller it is. A chromatic version of the FR3X has more tonal range than the piano version of the FR7X or FR8X. And of course, the chromatic button version of the FR7X and FR8X have the most tonal range of all. Another characteristic that I like is how on a five row chromatic system like this one, I can switch key signatures while at the same time retaining exactly the same fingering. Once I learn a piece in the key of C, I can play it in any other key signature using exactly the same fingering simply by changing the location of my starting point on the keyboard. Let me demonstrate this by playing the scale in the key of C, G, F, and then back to C. I'll use some left-hand accompaniment to help you better perceive the changes in key signature.
scale in the key of C uses only white keys, or buttons in this case. For the scale in G, I did not have to remember to play an F sharp instead of F. Due to the way the buttons are organized on the keyboard, by using the same fingering that I used in the key of C, my finger automatically fell on the proper black button for F sharp at the appropriate time. In the key of F, I did not have to remember to press B flat instead of B. Again, using the very same fingering that I used in the key of C, my finger automatically fell on the required black button for B flat at the appropriate time. In case you're wondering, yes, these scales can also be played exclusively on the first three rows, in which case each one does require different fingering. So you see, on the chromatic, I can play different key signatures using different fingering strategies. How I play at a particular time is a personal choice, depending on the melody and how it is written in the sheet music. A minor point, but one that I really like, is that on most chromatics, including those made by Roland, certain buttons have little bumps on them, bumps that I can feel with my fingertips to help me locate certain notes. On the French Seagriff system, typically every C and F button has such little bumps. Maybe you already own the piano versions of the FR3X, FR7X, or FR8X, yet still wonder what it's really like to play a chromatic. You might be motivated by a desire to reduce the weight and size of your instrument, while at the same time enjoying the greatest possible tonal range. Well, the best way to find out what it's like to play a chromatic is to get one and try it out yourself. This FR1XB is an inexpensive way for you to do that. It's a full-featured Roland V accordion with almost as many features as the FR3X. But don't expect it to be in stock. Chromatic button accordions are not popular enough in the US for Roxy's to stock them. Still, it's easy enough to put one on order. Call Rose at Roxy's. In this video, I've mentioned only a few of the differences between the chromatic button and the piano accordion. These differences were the ones that I considered the most important at the time that I was making my decision to change from piano to chromatic accordion. If you need more information, you can start by reading the article that I provide a link to in the text description section of this video. And don't be afraid to research it further yourself on the internet. But if your main concern is whether or not you'll be able to learn the chromatic, you can take it from me. Converting from piano to chromatic accordion is not as difficult as most piano accordionists say that it is. If I can do it, then surely you can also. Everyone at Roxy's wishes you success with your accordion playing.